Hello fellow aviators, V Ref Simmer here, and welcome to this Monday night flight between Washington's Dulles International Airport and New York's LaGuardia Airport. Happy to have everyone aboard. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop up into the cockpit, get everything fired up so we can get rolling on this flight. As you can see, the aircraft is cold and dark, but we're going to assume this is not the first flight of the day for this airplane, so that should shorten the amount of checklists we do tonight. Uh, so first thing we do, like we've always seen with the power-up check, you start toward the back, check the circuit breaker panels, make sure all the circuit breakers are in, which we can see they are in this case. So we'll go ahead and hop back into the captain's seat and start with our power-up flow. We'll click to get this armrest up really quickly. And... We move the thrust levers back to shut off. You know, I just found out what it is that's causing those thrust levers to do that for me. It's when I hit the F1 key. I have a, a a chat window that I can pull up, see what you all are saying. And when I hit that F1 key, it puts those thrust levers into uh, idle. So we need to make sure the thrust levers are in shut off, which they are now. So ADG handles stowed. The radars are both off both on the captain's and first officer's side. The flap lever's at zero, which we saw the flaps were up when we were looking outside. Thrust levers are shut off. Flight spoiler lever is retracted. Thrust reversers are off. Come up here, we'll make sure all the hydraulic switches are off, which they are, and we'll flip the battery master on. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick look at the DC side here. Make sure we have 22 volts minimum on the battery for the APU, we do. And I'm gonna go ahead and start up the APU actually. So we'll start with that fire detection test and I need to go back to the status page and make sure we have fire sys okay, which we do. And we can see that the APU lights, fire lights turned on over there. So we'll hit the power fuel switch for the APU. And we have the APU and bite test, which just finished and the door is open. And we'll hit the start stop switch and it's firing up so pretty soon the APU will be on and then we'll have AC power so we'll watch this uh, the RPM coming up around 60% we should have the APU start go out there it goes and 99% RPM plus about four seconds we will get the green avail light and all the electrical power should transfer over to the APU. So just waiting on that. Takes a little while for the APU to fire up. There it goes, 99. And you can see we have power now, so excellent. All right, we'll continue with the uh, power up flow. So nav lights, we'll turn those on. Logo lights, wing inspection. Let me get some lighting, integral lighting in uh, on the overhead panel so we can see those a little better. Let's go ahead and turn the stab trim on. Remember, we got to turn all the hydraulic pumps on before we turn on the stab trim because the system does a test. So ch stab channel one and channel two are on. Here's our spoiler stab and test advisory message. So we'll just wait for that to go off before we continue with the next part of our uh, flow here, which will be the IRS. Which, uh, we'll go ahead and do that really quickly because we just can't move any flight controls. Okay, that test is complete. So let's go to pause and knit. And we're at Dulles International Airport punch that in and then we would get our position from the GPS one position on page two all right cool the IRS initialization has begun it'll take quite a few minutes and I'm going to move our hydraulic switches back to auto and on now and I'll check the hydraulic quantities since that's something we'll check on our next flow they're still good when we're in auto and on so perfect um, let's do our done the flow for the power-up so I'll run through the power-up checklist really quickly and if you're wondering which checklist I'm using 
it's actually one that is uh, included in the description of the CRJ tutorial videos that are on the VRF server channel, so be sure to check those out. All right, so power up check, circuit breakers checked, radars off, thrust levers shut off, battery master was on, AC electric set, hydraulics pump one, 3A, 3B, and two were on for the stab trim switches to be engaged. Parking brakes on, which we see the green advisory message right there on the top of ED2, and IRS is now on nav. Power up check complete. Okay, receiving check. The only thing we need to do, we'll get the emergency lights armed. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the no smoking and passenger signs. And our documents are all good. So documents checked, maintenance status checked, emergency equipment checked. So all that's back there. Uh, standby instruments, let's make sure the ISI here, integrated standby instrument looks good, which it does. So standby instruments checked and gear pins checked. Receiving check complete. Let's go ahead and get the ATIS here and get our clearance. And then we'll uh, get the FMS program for our flight. Before we do that, I'm going to get some of the lighting where it should be up in the cockpit. So you just use these integral knobs here to get the lighting up. Uh, that's for the center console and the upper pedestal. For the captain's side, it's right there. For the overhead, we already looked at that. It's right there. Circuit breakers back behind us. That's going to be this far right knob here. And then for the first officer, same as the captain. It's just right over there to the right. Okay. So for our ATIS frequency, it's uh, 134.85, it looks like. 134.85. So get that. We'll see if it'll turn on. I've been having trouble with the ATIS frequencies working here on V-Pilot. So there's 134.85. We'll see if it comes up. I don't think it will. So I'm going to click, double click in V-Pilot and it should let us see the ATIS. And it did. So right now, information. Zulu is current at Washington Dulles. And the winds are 100 at 3, 10 miles clear. Temperatures 6, dew points 0, 3026 on the altimeters. And looks like they're arriving to the south, departing runway 30 and 19 left. So I will, I'll call up, usually they'll tell us which runway to expect when we're um, getting ready to go. Okay, so it's 134.85 and then looks like Washington Center's on 133.725. So I'll punch that in really quick on the radio page. 133.725. And I'll put that in standby because 122.8 will probably be using that later this flight depending on if uh, air traffic control is on or not for us. Okay, so I'll give them a call. Washington Center, good evening. Lindbergh 6337 on the ground, Washington Dulles. Like to pick up IFR clearance to LaGuardia. Lindbergh 6337, Washington Center, hello. Clear to the LaGuardia International Airport. Vision copy for departure, a guard transition, and then I file. Maintain 3000. We expect flight level 210, 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency is 133.72. Squawk 3570. Limburg 6337, clear to LaGuardia. Check up before departure, a guard transition as filed. Climb 3000, expect flight level 210 and 10 minutes. Departure 133.72, squawk 3570. Sixty-three thirty-seven. Rebuck is correct. All right, so we'll just expect runway uh, three zero for now. So I'll request if we get it. so three five seven zero is our squat code. We'll go ahead and punch that in. Um, both of the transponders. I'll go back to the index page and we'll go ahead and program everything in after I set our initial altitude of three thousand feet. So I'm holding down the shift key like some of y'all told me. And that does do the trick because you can see I got down from 10,000 to 3,000 in no time at all. And I know our runway heading off of three, runway 30 is going to be 301. So I'm going to go ahead and dial that in. That'll be our initial heading. 
on the departure. Okay, so we'll start here on the status page. And we need to make sure that the active database matches on both the captain and first officer's FMS, which they do. So we'll move on to the positive page, which we already looked at that. It's all good and set. And then we'll enter our origin and destination, which is Dulles to LaGuardia. And our flight number today is 6337. This is a GoJet Airlines flight uh, under the United Express banner, as you can see here. It's trying to match it up with the uh, paint job that's on the Aerosoft CRJ550, but it's GoJet Airlines. So call sign Lindbergh 6337. And then we had the no alternate today. Planning runway 30, and it's the JW4 Agar transition. So we'll execute that. And uh, on the Gordia, it's the Cori 4 Agar transition. Washington Center radar contact. Three fed transponders. Three seven seven six. And there are some. Three seven seven six. that mod put LaGuardia at the end here on the legs page so there's something weird that goes on with this departure I've seen this before um, it's like it's, those of you that tuned in earlier this stream was originally supposed to happen a few hours earlier and uh, so there's something with the first fix on the Jacoby 4 departure it's uh, Riggins it will not load in the right place but you can see we can see it here on our, our MFD so we're gonna fly in heading mode to Riggins and then once we get to Riggins we'll go direct to Jacoby and clean up the FMS here and it'll work out just fine but that's the plan with that um, but it is a little a little odd 225 is the distance we're showing in there we'll we'll check it uh, during the departure briefing but so next we go to the perfect page and let me pull up our flight release Jazz. Then we have Washington Center, Clarence Center Club. through SimBrief. So just stand by one second. Just have to pull it up. have to log in. It logged me out for some reason on my phone, um, which is what I use typically to look at SimBrief if I'm not flying an X-Plane. An X-Plane, I bring it up on Avatab so you all can see it. But uh, flight level 350 is what we're planning this evening. So we're, we're going way up there. And we'll follow, obviously we'll be following Washington Center's instructions initially. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's go ahead and load our fuel and all of that. It'll get everything in. I changed to zero fuel weight here on the Aerosoft EFB because our planned zero fuel weight is 53.858. So I'll just click the double arrows, takes us up 1,000 pounds at a time. And uh, 50, it's 58. Or I'm sorry, 53,858. So 53,858. And then our fuel load, we are planned at 5,520 pounds. So I'll take this back down to 5,000 and 562. That'll work. So we'll set the payload in the simulator. Copy the perfinite data to FMS. Looks like our takeoff trim is going to be 5.7. So I'll write that down on my scratch pad. And we'll go ahead and set that right now just so we don't forget so 5.7 is now set in the trim and I'll check that the trim works going both up and down which it does and 5.7 is set on the stab trim for takeoff also while we're over here I'm gonna go ahead and set the speeds for takeoff so uh, we'll be flaps 8 it's dry runway this evening I'll set all the speeds we're showing V1 of 125 125 36 Defend via 185, 146 in the bucket. That's all uh, set. Actually, I uh, found the Dylan for we'll it. We'll go ahead and turn the brightness uh, down to. There we go. That'll work. I am in a Dylan 4 arrival. Okay. All right. Um, so you can see it got all of our uh, fuel and weight sets, and we'll move on to the next page here. And ISO deviation. I get this Definitely off a simple brief. I'll have to show this to you in a. Um, 
video in the future, but minus one is the deviation from the standard atmosphere today. So we'll put that in. And it cruise we have a six knot tailwind. And I do not have the wind components for climber descent, unfortunately, in this sim brief release that I have. So field tonight is going to be 2,000 pounds, and taxi fuel is up at 500 pounds. So we'll enter that in. That's all good. Move down to the radio page. Make sure both are in auto mode. Perf, advisor VNAV enabled. We're going to be a full rated thrust. I don't have flex temp data available. Predicted mode on the fuel management. And move on to uh, make sure VNAV setup all looks good, which it, it is. Um, and then MFT menu. Put in high nav aid, speed, altitude, missed approach on the left side, fly pilot side tonight, VNAV in the window. And also add the Loran position, long range nav position. And then. Uh, Washington on the right side, to the, uh, Montreal we'll do everything the same except the in the window, we'll just turn it on. Marcher. And then I'll show how much Our fuel we can expect transition. when we Traffic land. Flat rock VOR. And there Flat are some VORs Flat Flat that are out of service. So if you look in the notams of uh, Maintain for our flight and the release, FAA has decommissioned quite a few VORs around the United States right now. So want to disable those so that the FMS isn't trying to use them to to navigate. That's really important in real life, and I'm not sure if it makes much of a difference in the sim world, but uh, we'll go ahead and simulate that yeah, just like we would in real life. Remember, so the two VRs is Linden and then also um, Bravo, uh, Romeo, Victor. So you just get to this page by hitting index, VOR, DME control, and you can navigate inhibit, inhibit any of them that are not... Um, in service and that's it we have the FMS all set up so let's go ahead and run through our flow for our before start check I'm gonna get some floodlights on just a little bit so we have a little bit better lighting and then we'll move on to we get the yoke down here so I can adjust the first officer side okay and then we'll move on to do the rest. So I'm just going to run through the flow by going up here, making sure uh, everything looks good. This is just basically, we already checked the hydraulics. We already, uh, the bleeds are all good. APs already started. Fuel panel's good. Cabin pressure, we need to get that set. So it's 36 feet at New York LaGuardia. And I have us at 60 right there. Let me go down one more to 40. All right, perfect. That's set. Let's see. Make sure all the knobs are good. We'll turn the packs on. We'll go ahead and turn on the recirc fan. Uh, we'll get the after cargo. We'll get the air after our start. Go ahead and turn the windshield heats to low. Probe heats on. Get the standby compass to dim, which it is. We have our dome light on right now, which is helpful. We've already set the, we need to set the altimeter now. Let me go back to the captain's seat. That was at uh, 3026. I'm going to move our yoke down so we can see it. FedEx 1428, Philly approach is offline. Frequency change approved, good. Over to Unicom 1428, heavy day. All right, there's 3026 set and cross checked. And while we're down here, I'm going to go ahead and check our oxygen mask, which is good. I did the uh, radar altimeter check, I think. And that's all good. Um, come down here, any skids armed. The thrust reversers need to be armed. Thrust levers are shut off. Flight spoilers retracted. Everything's good there. Don't need to do the. Uh, I do need to get the TCAS set up the way we like it. So auto, relative, and then norm. So that's all set. We don't need to do the TCAS system test. Radars are off. Mock trim needs to be engaged. The yaw dampers need to be engaged, and I'll make sure that they disconnect. We get the caution message. I'll re-engage them. 
and the display and avionics fans are norm source selectors are all in normal and we can talk about some of those more in a another tutorial video later on and then it's also important that we always check the trim every before every flight so i'm checking the rotor trim really quickly make sure it's going back and forth i have that linked to my honeycomb alpha flight yoke and then the aileron trim we're going to have to do that with uh the mouse wheel so you can see we went to the right there and now we're going back to the left and we want it to stay in the green which it is okay great all right let's run through our before start check and then we'll do a well first i guess we should do the departure briefing and then we'll be ready for the before start check so for our departure briefing we're uh Lindbergh flight 6337 on the correct aircraft have the right crew on board for our weights, um, we're going to be takeoff weights 58, 900, so we're on the 59,000 pound card. Plan gate fuel is 55,20. We have did not set our fuel correctly. It's showing 9,780, so let's check that. That's why you do these checklists. Um, well, set payload in simulator. 5,562. Set all the speeds. Let's make sure that worked. So 5,560 now. Yep, that is working. So that's why you do these checklists. Make sure you have everything the way it should be. So we have our planned f gate fuel of 5520. Up at 5560. Min fuel for takeoffs 5020. The weather. ATIS here at Dulles showing winds 1003. Clear skies, 10 miles Boomer, visibility, 6 degrees Celsius, 3026 on the meters is set cross-checked, plan only 30 for departure. That's shown in the FMS. In the ATIS, or actually, I'm sorry, in the forecast, the TAF for LaGuardia, we're showing... It's supposed to forecast to be wind 0605 knots, plus 6 miles, clear skies. And we'll try to get the expressway visual to 3-1 if we can. Right, for it's light winds up there, so we can do it. Right, Notum wise, uh, we already talked about the pertinent ones. It was just those VMR, VORs out of service. Uh, for our taxi out route, let me pull up the Navigraph chart really quickly so you all can see it. I have to click a window here. There we go. And so we're planning. We're here at Alpha 4 Charlie. If we're going to 30, push back onto Charlie, head to the west, and then south on Zulu, Yankee 11, Roy 30. 10,500 feet available, and plenty of runway. If we have to reject the takeoff, uh, below 80 knots will be for a variety of reasons. Above 80 knots only for engine fire, severe engine damage, or the inability of the aircraft to get or stay airborne. We'll call that CRJ standard. And I'll close out that chart for right now. Speeds are set off the 59,000 pound card, and you can see they're there in the PFD. We'll check it really quickly. Flaps 8, V1 is 124, VR 124, V2 136, VT 178, and we have 146 in the bucket, V2 plus 10. Ren Ren's World, hello, great to have you aboard. Glad you're here, Ren Ren. Uh, welcome on this flight, late night flight between Washington, Dulles, and LaGuardia. Glad you can make it. We're just uh, finishing up the departure briefing, so just let me know if you have any questions as we go along. All right, so profile, we're, we're uh, take off. Flap retraction altitude is going to be 1320. I'm going to set that in the MDA window just so we have it as a reference in case we uh, were to lose an engine. If we do lose an engine, we'll go to 1320 and retract the flaps and climb up to... 3,000 feet, right turn 360, and work through the problem, and likely come back to land here at Dulles. For our clearance, we're squawking 3570, up to 3,000 initially, via the Jacoby 4, and then Agar transition as filed. So on the Jacoby 4 departure, I'll pull up the chart. See, so Jacoby 4 departure. It's it right there. I want to zoom in on the FMS so you all can see it uh, as we go through this here. 
So runway 30 initially a heading of 301 to 820 feet, then a right turn heading 320, and then vectors out to Riggins, which will be in heading mode to get out there because it won't put it into later in this uh, FMS database for whatever reason, and it won't let me bring it back up there, so we'll just we'll deal with that. Uh, and then it's going to be Jacoby and Grim, Rise, Dr. Agard. And after that, we'll be cleaning it up because we'll be going on to the approach, which is Agard, or not on the approach, but on the arrival into LaGuardia, Corey 4, Agard, Speak, Smyrna, at above flight level 240, Skippy, at above flight level 190. Bessie, at or above, let me check that for you all so you can see this. There's a lot on this one, I know. So, uh, Bessie, oh. at above 17,000. Edger, Davies, at above 13. Hold up one second. Arrival, expect ILS or visual. Just playing the, uh, <laughs> playing the new ATIS. We'll listen to that in a second. Bessie, at above 17, then Edger, Davies, at or above 13,000. Brand, at or above 11, and Corey. At 10,000. Yay, FMS. That's right, Reds World. It's night for me, so I can't be for long. All right. I understand. Alec Henderson, great to have you back. Yeah, I'm trying this again, Alec. I think the internet will work a little better now late at night. So I'm going to try it again. All right, so Corey at 10. Then we have Robbinsville, Tykes, Mink, Renew, Apple, and Proud. So that all matches then to the airport total distance 225 and in the release I'm showing a total distance of standby I have to go all the way to the top here 227 so hey that that matches we'll copy active and we're good to go in that regard so transition altitude will be flight level John 8179 runway 5 left 180 Parcher is going to be 133.72 so I'll write that down on my scratch pad just make sure I have it and let's listen up and get the yeah, new ATIS Level 340, correct. Runway assignment central hold short instruction. Operating mode C on no taxiway and runway. Ramp is non movement area. Call for taxi on west or east side of ramp. Advise on initial contact. You have information alpha. Advise on initial contact. You have information alpha. Alright, so we're going to listen to alpha here. Correct. Yeah, Alec, my internet just went out on the last stream, so... Washington Bells International Airport, date of information, Alpha 0352 Zulu. Webcom. Visibility 10. Sky clear below 12,000. Temperature 6. 2.1. Altimeter 3026. Arrival is expect ILS or visual runway 19. Alright, so we're good there. Runway 19. So doesn't sound like anything really changed. Departing runway 30. Runway one nine or okay. left. Simultaneous approaches are being conducted. All right, very cool. Runway. So I think we're good with that. North of two airmen. Reach my call runway assignment. Switch this and over to one two one point five. Renz, were you seen a CRJ in real life? Very cool. How did you get? Okay. How did you get to see a CRJ in real life? That's really cool. Play five left, clear for takeoff. Fly one way heading. All right, let's we'll switch over to guard there. And we'll be have that standby so we can listen up. All right, so let's run through the before start check. Now that we have done everything, we'll consider this is not a first flight. So before start, exterior inspection is complete. Pressurization is set. Whoops. Yep, it is set. Anti ice set. Hydraulic set. Passenger signs on. Altimeters three zero two six. Cross check. IRS nav. Uh, NA skid is armed. Most of the arms. Parking brake on. <laughs> Radios nav aid set. Yaw damper okay, engaged. Okay, Oxygen checked 100%. Departure briefing complete. Four start check complete. Alright, so we're ready to. For our pushback, let's go ahead and close up the door. We'll do our engine start check and uh, get underway. I'll. Uh, I'll call center and see if he wants us to push back, but 
I'll check that here in a sec. So I'm going to assume they've already connected to us. So I'm going to remove the chocks. And we are going to... So we need to disconnect the ground power cart. Chocks removed. Okay, I think we're all set. So I'm going to turn off the EFB for a bit. So Ren Ren's World, you've seen it at San Francisco Airport, not really my local airport. Okay, cool. Yeah, they're neat aircraft. They're actually, they're really cool looking, especially like the CRJ 700, 550, 900, they kind of tilt down. It's like a little race car, but cool aircraft. All right, so we'll go through the quick flow. Nozzle steering off, beacon, we'll turn that on. Uh, fuel pumps come on, and transponder. We'll turn that on to the flying pilot side, which would be the number one transponder today. All right, so that looks good. Let me run through the engine start checklist. FMSA cars set, fuel quantity 5520 planned, and we have 5520 on board. Beacon on, nose wheel steering is off. Fuel pumps on, doors. Let's check that really quickly on the status page here all right they're all green and closed transponder on flight deck door is locked engine start check complete we're ready for pushback guys and center Lindbergh 6337 ready to push alpha 4 charlie at dulles 6337 push is at your discretion is like one on our left for departure uh, can we take uh, runway 30, Lindbergh 6337? Sure, expect 30, and a disadvised rate taxi holding short of Zulu. We'll go Lindbergh 6337. All right, so we're ready to roll. So brakes are released, I think. There they go. And go to push. Here we go. I'm just going to make sure I don't see anybody behind us, which I don't. Very cool. So, Ren Ren World, you saw the CRJ at San Francisco. Were you just traveling through the airport, or did you, uh... You're just on vacation out there? Or what is your local airport? <laughs> I guess that would be a, a better question. That's really cool. All right, they're getting the, the tug connected. We'll be underway. Here we go. All right, so we're clear to start. We'll start number two, then one. Here we go. Start a timer. And two. Oil pressure, N1, ITT is good. We're just waiting for 20% on the N2. Target 400, contact on a crest. There it is. 8179, radar contact. And uh, Quebec, Oxford, Feel call me uh, 12,000. And waiting on light up. Gotta make sure we don't push back too far. I'm just using the default Microsoft Flight Simulator pushback. All right, I'll call this stop. Clear to disconnect, clear off headset. Thanks for the great push. We'll set our parking brake. And always check to make sure you see that green advisor message. Parking brake is on. And getting a good start. They just deployed our flight spoiler for some reason. That's weird. Huh. Well, let's wait on N1 to stabilize, and then we'll move on, and... Alright, let's start number one. Here we go. N2. Oil pressure. Yeah, that, Ren Ren, you're in for a treat. This is a great aircraft. It's a little buggy since it just came out, but it's still in great shape. Yeah, me too, Alec Anderson. I, I don't really like the default pushback either. There's our 20%, so let's uh, American 400, Rebec, that's correct. go ahead and move the thrust lever to idle. So over six, six, Fuel like flow. Joe Hoff at one three thousand. And we should have light up the, uh, any second now. 
Let's shift back over to the captain's seat. There's our light up. Still on one Great. Three thousand. Uh, we'll let you know. We might be a little high. Uh, three, six, six, While it's lighting up, I'm going to adjust the brightness of our uh, screens a little bit. They're a little too bright for nighttime. If you all have trouble seeing them at home, let me know. I'll leave them a little brighter just to help you all see them. But you just move these display knobs. Adjust the brightness. And um, on the ISI, you hit the little negative sign right there. Whoops. And same over here on the first officer's side. Just move the knob down. On the FMSs, it's this top right knob that adjusts the brightness. So just roll it down. There we go. All right, so we have good starts. So flaps eight. So takeoff setting. Just waiting on them to come down. Watch your knees because, here, let me move the yokes back up. These things will hit your knees in real life when you're doing the control check. Watch your knees and check the controls. We need to make sure we see it go full right, full left, full forward, full left, rudder to the right, to the left, and after start check. So we'll run through that after start flow really quickly. So for the first officer, you make sure the gens are all in auto. Go ahead and turn off the APU. Conditioned air is on, anti ice is all set. Arm the nozzle steering. Oh man, there go the police. Caught somebody. Alright, let's do after start check. So it's going to be generators, auto, bleeds, auto. Packs on, cargo air conditioned air, anti ice set, fuel pumps on, flight controls check, rudder check, nozzle steering, armed. After start check complete, performance check, FMS runway 30. And we're going to be going out to Riggins and then Jacoby. And that's set. Thrust is full 88 or 86.6. Trims 5.7. And they are centered. Let me go back to the status page here. 5.7 centered. Flaps 8 planned, 8 indicating. Speeds. I'm going to turn on the EFB one last time just to make sure we have these set. Because you want to be verifying this against an actual. Uh, performance numbers which for us it's going to be this aerosoft efb so 124 124 136 178 and then 146 in the bucket that's all set performance check complete all right we're clear right clear left here we go and he said we can taxi on over to the west side of the ramp just as briefed Plan our departure off 3-0. Ren Ren's World, what flight equipment do I use? Well, so are you talking about hardware with the computer? Because if that's the case, I have the SciTech thrust lever quadrant, or the throttles, and then I have the Honeycomb Alpha yoke, and I also have some rudder pedals, which are the Thrustmaster rudder pedals. But I have the Honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant on the way, so hopefully by... The Friday night stream, I'll be using that Honeycomb Bravo. But if that was, uh, I'm guessing that was your question, just Watch. what hardware do I use? One, taxi via Kilo. Switch back Kilo to Comp two. 1 here. Juliet, cross from my four. This airplane will get up and move once you get rolling. Take a quick look outside. And this is this is the uh, the dullest scenery that you're looking at. I actually uh, this was from the Microsoft Flight Sim Marketplace. So this is not the default dullest. This is a a special dullest that is available for a few bucks in the marketplace. So it looks nice. You can see the cool uh, people movers that they use here. They look like a Star Wars vehicle. That they take you from terminal to terminal okay. in. So, very cool. Ren Ren's World, you use the SciTech yoke and throttle and Thrustmaster rudders. Very cool. So, yeah, you and I have two of our pieces of equipment are the exact same. And I really do like the SciTech throttles a lot. They've been, they've been perfect. I, um, I'm wanting to do a little bit of engine out work in the CRJ to make some videos in the training series, so uh, I needed to get 
two thrust levers in order to do that effectively. So I can easily control um, each of the thrust levers. But for single engine ops or normal ops in a multi-engine aircraft, this SciTech throttle quadrant is great. I love it. And it's quite affordable for what it does. All right, I'm gonna slow our roll just a bit. We're screaming down here. Like I've said, uh, I'll go ahead and brief all of you that are watching, but I consider each of you a part of the flight crew. So if you see anything that seems a little off, um, you all were here for the departure briefing. If there's, so we should have a shared mental model of what we're planning to do on this flight. So if anything seems off, be sure to speak up. Alec Henderson, you need to get a yoke. You only have a joystick. I'll tell you, yeah, the yoke is really nice for uh, for flying. But hey, Airbus, they use a side stick, right? So, all right, let me uh, pay attention here. Let me give him a call. Number six six Mike, product corny. We have to stop right here. Product corny. Six, 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 get our clearance. Washington Center. Lindbergh 6337 at spot 78 at Dulles, ready to taxi with Alpha. Lindbergh 6337, runway 30, taxi via Zulu Yankee 11. Runway 30, taxi Zulu Yankee 11. Lindbergh 6337. Okay, so we're clear to taxi now. We're clear right, clear left. Here we go. Go left turn at Zulu, and we'll continue. Yeah, Alec Henderson, let's see. Yep. Yokes are nice, yes they are, and the throttle pedal setup, it is, it is nice, I gotta say, especially having the rudder pedals for taxiing and other things, it just adds a, an extra element of immersion, and especially if you start getting into VR, it's I'm really nice six, to six, have six, all of those things. Discretion, maintain 5, you start to feel like you're actually there, five, it's, it's pretty cool. But it took me a while to get all of this stuff, so I mean, you know, you gotta kind of get things piece by piece as you can afford them, and and it, it takes time. Right now, all the equipment's really, really um, popular. Yeah, Lim Limburg is a really cool airline call site. I agree. I agree. I like that uh, GoJets uses that in real life. It's really cool. Which I don't know if you all read it, but Charles Lindbergh wrote a book about his crossing of the Atlantic Ocean, and it is a fascinating read. It's a pretty large book, but I would highly recommend it if you're interested in aviation. It's a great story, and especially to hear it from his perspective as he was crossing the Atlantic Ocean solo in that little Spirit of St. Louis single-engine plane. So a fascinating character in aviation history for sure. All right, we'll go ahead and do a quick takeoff briefing uh, while we're on the way to the runway. This is just a, another quick chance for us to catch any um, errors that might have occurred up to this point and also make sure we're having a shared mental model going into the departure. So we're planning to take off runway 30 out of Dulles. The full rated thrust rolling, bleeds on the engines, flaps are set at 8 degrees, and the speeds are set at 124, 124, 136, 178, 146 in the bucket. We're cleared up to 3,000 feet initially, which is set via the Jacoby 4 departure. And uh, we'll be 301 heading up to 820 feet, then a right turn heading 320, or as assigned by ATC, vectors out to Riggins, which is showing on our MFD here, right there. And like I said, we're gonna have to intercept it in heading mode and I'll call for uh, speed mode, heading mode, and autopilot on uh, likely, uh, it'll probably be around 1,000 feet. And we'll start retracting the flaps at 1320, climb out at 250 knots, standard CRJ abort. There's nothing else to add. If you all don't have any questions, I'm going to go ahead, uh, let's do the, whoops, let's do the before takeoff check to the line. American 400, runway one, cleared for takeoff. Washington, All right, before takeoff, call. check. Runway one, 
Take off briefing complete. Cross flow auto override is manual. Ignition off. Nav instruments. Check. Right heading. Checked. Uh, actually, turn right heading. Fuel quantity. Three, three, zero, one, eight, three, Fifty zero, twenty zero, minute fuel, off. and we have five thousand three hundred ten on board and balanced. ICUS checked, cleared. Brake temperatures checked. Cabin ready. Four takeoff check to the line complete. And Alec Henderson, the Spirit of St. Louis was always kind of sketchy, in my opinion. No forward windows, and he just had a mirror system to see out front. Oh, yeah, exactly. Three, three, zero, one way, three, zero, clear for takeoff. Say again. Center, good evening. UPS 9898 Heavy is with you, level 5030. UPS 9898 Washington Center, squad 3545. 3545, UPS 9898 Heavy, good evening. Lumberg 6337, turn right sitting 330, one way, 30, clear for takeoff. Right, 330, one way, 30, clear for takeoff, Lumberg 6337. Okay, so 330 set, 30 is on the pavement, 30 is on the sign, we're clear for takeoff. And uh, let's do a before takeoff check below the line. Takeoff configuration is checked. We have that green advisory message there. The anti ice is standard N1 is checked, 86.6. External lights set for takeoff check complete. And we're looking at runway 30 on the pavement. We need to hit the toga button to update the runway position. Toto's enunciated flight directors are up. Here we go. I have controls. Let's roll, guys. And set thrust. Thrust set. A knots. Check. V1. Rotate. Yes, 98, 98, right contact, come out, stop, north, east, north, Speed so mode. Check. Good evening, UPS, 98, 98. Heading mode. Autopilot on. Alright. Alts cap. Hopefully it doesn't blow through the altitude. <laughs> That's the fun thing. Alright, flaps one. Alts cap. Whoa. That mouse wheel goes crazy. Flaps up. Set climb thrust. Actually, we're going to have to go on back in our thrust settings because we're going to blow through 250. Let me just manually adjust that. And we'll go to 250 knots. And after takeoff check. So you do the after takeoff flow. Boston Center, Delta 16, and cross flow back to auto. 50 forward to the south of Wilmington. Thrust reversers off. And we'll run through the quick checklist. And then I'll look through the chat with you guys here a sec. A lot to do right after takeoff, obviously. Gears up, flaps up. 1636, Washington, put our radar contact. Cross flow, road, auto, cross flow auto override auto. Thrust climb, thrust reversers off. ICUS is, let's check it and clear it. So. Right, 6337, radar contact. Right direct Riggins, climb 18, 10,000. Right direct Riggins, climb 10,000, Lindbergh 6337. All right, Riggins, there we go. We have to do it in heading mode, and I'll set 10,000. Right, 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 right. Let me see, uh, fly level 210. 10. Ah. 10,000 is set. All right, speed mode, here we go. I have to hold down. There it goes. America, for Washington. 250, right, here we go, up to 10. Level set climb thrust. All right, and we're off. Evan Moore, welcome. Thank you for the donation so much, and I really appreciate that. It's very generous of you. I'm really glad you're here to, for this exciting flight. Let me tell you, this is a this is a fun approach we're about to do in New York, if we get to do the expressway visual. So thank you so much, Evan Moore. Glad you're back. Glad you're back. In Red Ren's world, you're actually downloading a CRJ700 into X-Plane 11. Really? So uh, tell me, which uh, which CRJ700 are you getting to download? I would love to get a CRJ700 for X-Plane 11. So I need to turn a little more to the right. 
And uh, here's something that's really cool in this CRJ. This little green dot here, that shows where you're actually heading with the wind drift. The winds are really light right now, but like right now with the FMS database issue we're having, um, where I can't have us go to Riggins and then Jacoby, just get the green Hello, dot. 63, 37, climb maintain, fly level 210. Climb maintain, fly level 210, Limburg 6337. Oh man, let me pull the thrust back. Let's try to do something crazy here. Come on, speed mode. There we go. There we go. Climb thrust is set. <laughs> now I can go back up to play with C10. US 9898, go back to Salisbury. Please to like Salisbury BR. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'm gonna hold down shift, Evan, more like you taught me. That does help. Look at that. See? Right to 210. 21 is set. Number 669 cross Corny at our bus 4000. Cleared our knife for 91. Alright, I can clear out our flap attraction altitude I put in the MDA. Alright, we're at 10,000 feet now, so we'll accelerate to 290 knots. And the only other threat we need to make sure after Riggins that we go direct to Jacoby. So I'll be watching out for that. Ren Ren's World, you are not sure which 700 it is, but it has a lot of liveries. Well, hey, a lot of liveries sounds like a good thing. I'm all for that. That's a... Yeah, but if you figure out which one it is, yeah, be sure to let me know. Um, you can comment under this video afterwards or... Yeah, I'd like to check it out. I love the CRJ, that's for sure. Okay, we'll go direct to Jacoby now, and then we should be able to, I'll clean up the FMS, there's FMS 1, and let's get this all cleaned up. So I'll take the A-guard from the arrival, put it right there, and we're still going direct Jacoby, execute. So now everything's cleaned up. I'm guessing they'll get this database cleaned up when Navigraph has a better idea of uh, what they want to do in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But that's just something weird that was happening with these, this, all the departures out of American Dulles 400. for some reason. Three, four, zero. Three, four, zero. Three, four, zero. Three, four, it looks like we're having a little bit of trouble tracking onto the departure here, but I think the autopilot will settle down. Let's take a look outside. Let's take a look at Washington, D.C. Beautiful evening here. So there's Dulles and Washington National right there. And the, and the mall will be uh, out in that area. So very cool. And we'll be flying right by Baltimore. All right, so we're through flight level 180 now. So we need to set 2992 and the altimeters and get our external lights set also. So landing lights come off, recock taxi lights off, wing inspection logo is off. So altimeter is 2992, cross check, external lights set, climb check is complete. All right, Alec Henderson. Not sure if you can say, but what airline do you fly with in real life? Uh, 20 for 21, outs cap. I, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I prefer to. I'll have to remain anonymous because they're very. Um, the airlines are very persnickety with their uh, with their trade secrets and other other things. So, but I did. I'd say most of my CRJ hours are in the CRJ 200, and then I spent quite a few years flying the CRJ 700 and also the 900 some. And I never got to fly the 550. That's a recent thing. But, I mean, it's the same as the 700. They just took a bunch of seats out. So, I bet you the 550 is fun to fly in real life. Because the 700, it gets up and moves. So. But, yeah, it was it was an airline that was primarily on the east coast of the U.S. So, I've flown this actual route in real life many times between Dulles and LaGuardia. And it is a fun a fun flight. <laughs> yeah, you probably noticed that with a lot of the streamers that 
or real world pilots, yeah, just don't say who you fly for, cause yeah, it's all that all that lawyer stuff. All right, what a beautiful night we have here. So this is the real world weather out in uh, over Washington D.C. Now Baltimore. I wouldn't be surprised if they keep us at flight level two one zero. I'll have to I'll have to ask him. I'm Air 669, so it's between the Leesburg Airport, Fort Ivy Camp Station, and Norman at the bridge. This is going to be frequency change for you. Frequency change for 669. Washington Senate, Salt Lake. Oh, he's, he's pretty busy right now, actually. Well, let's check out some of the cabin views I set up in the back here. So, um, yeah, there we are. I think that's Andrews Air Force Base down there. I wonder if they have. Air Force One down there somewhere, who knows? And then other side of the cabin, up toward Baltimore. And let's see, I'll take us back up front now. But it's smooth ride. I want to see if this is our final altitude, and I might t turn the seatbelt signs off for our passengers here. And. 7 I want center class line, frequency change approved, good day. And Washington Center, Lindbergh 6337. Can we just plan on Flyable 210 as the final? Hey, Bernie, expect Flyable 210. Roger, we'll, uh, we'll stay at 210 for the final. Lindbergh 6337. All right, so there we go. We have it. So I'll go ahead and turn off the fasten seatbelt sign so everybody can move around. And then one thing we have to do. Let's go here to Perf init, and we're initially we were planning our cruise altitude flight level 350. Now we're going to be stopping at 210, so we can just put F210, punch it in there, execute, and there we go. That's all set up. So that's what you can do if you level off lower than where you were planning to Thank climb to. Alright, I'm going to check the uh, check my. That sim similar map. See if New York's still on. And from what I'm looking at, looks like New York approach is still still active tonight. A lot of people at LaGuardia. Good. So we might actually get to have a control all the way up there. Hey, Supercell, how are you doing? Endeavor? No, no, not Endeavor. <laughs> Not endeavor. It's a good airline, though. Great airline to go fly for if uh, you want to go work for Delta. I can say that, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the CRJ 700, it's a plate. Like, it's. The cool thing about it is. Uh, the cool thing about it is it will overspeed. Like it has way too much thrust, so this thing likes to move. Whereas the CRJ 200, it's huffing and puffing above flight level 180. And it's late night. You know, we have plenty of fuel. I'm gonna pick up our speed. We'll go to 74 Mach 74. This isn't real life where they slow you down on the way to LaGuardia. We'll take advantage of being in the sim. We'll go right up toward red line. <laughs> get, get a little risky tonight, right? 72, we'll do box 72. Okay, 6337 is Send via the Cory 4 arrival and uh, 3032, Lindbergh 6337.
All right, so we can descend via the quarry for arrival, which I'm going to need to go ahead. And Whoa, it just set my speed back to 290, didn't it? Or maybe I hit something. Well, anyways, we can descend via the quarry four. Let me, I'll pull up the chart for y'all really quickly. So on the quarry four, our bottom altitude is here at quarry. You can see it's 10,000 feet. So I'll go ahead and set that in our altitude window. I'm gonna hold down shift once again. Thanks, Evan Moore. I appreciate that tip. Zoom out. I think you said zoom out, and uh, there we go. Ten thousand feet. That saved me so much time. And I think so. I've had the VNAV white snowflake that shows up here in the PFD work sometimes, and other times it does not work. Okay, let's see. Alec Henderson, you experienced that on your flight to Detroit earlier today. Oh wow. So my graphics processor unit, it's a, uh, what is it? It's the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super, I think is what it is. So it's been working pretty well. I, sometimes I get some pretty bad stutters. Uh, I think I need to update the graphics driver because I have an old one from when Flight Sim first came out because I was getting better performance with this than some of the newer drivers. But I think I heard someone say the newest driver from NVIDIA works really well. So... Okay. So we have our um, 10,000 set Smyrna coming up here. You can see we got to be at our buff level 240. So we have a little while before we'll start descending. When you land, make it butter. I'll try Ren Ren's World. I'm going to be trying to do the uh, expressway visual to 3-1. I don't know if you've seen that approach before, but it's a famous one. Evan Moore, you get terrible stutters recently. Yes, me too. I have. I would not be surprised yes, when we're coming to New York maybe. if it starts stuttering a lot. So. Uh, discussion down to file 240 All right. 98, 98. And can we get the R now for uh, actually standby? I'm going to get the ATIS at LaGuardia. It's 127.5. Can we do the R now for runway 14 in the solve for 89? I'll see if we can tune it in on the radio. I don't know if it'll let us listen to it. Uh, RNF 24, do you have any uh, specific things you'd like to do that from? We'll check the RNF runway 14 in the Salisbury, and we'd like to do the, if possible, chops uh, transition. Hopefully it works. EPS 98, 98. Yeah, uh, Alec, you've been having the stutters too. We'll yeah, me three. Yeah, me three. So I think it is the newest update. Did I get the uh, Nottam uh, Salisbury? We'll check the weather station out right. there. Uh, the I don't there. think so the we'll audio for the ADS will work. I'm going to pull it up on the uh, V pilot message window and I have it here so it looks like and three zero three Bravo two, is the current ADIS at LaGuardia winds are 0704 so they're light we'll still be able to land 3-1 if we want to so clear skies 10 miles visibility 3032 on the altimeters they're using runway 4 ILS 4 approaching use departing runway 1-3 yeah, I guess it's just going to depend on how busy they are as to whether they'll let us do the expressway visual or not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set us up for the ILS to 4 because that plays right into the expressway visual 3-1. And we'll request the expressway visual 3-1 and then go. Supercell, anyone know cheap place to get multi-done? Ooh, cheap? I... <laughs> I don't know if there's any, <laughs> there's something, cheap and flying, learning to fly don't go together. They just don't, it's, I don't, I would say the cheapest place to get your multi-engine done is to go to the Air Force or the Air National Guard. But you will pay with years of service. 
Um, but yeah, it's gonna cost you a lot of money no matter how you do it. Three, <laughs> the river, twelve o'clock, ten Unless somebody else knows of a another way to do it. Uh, can you repeat for America? Fourteen eighty three. Sorry, you said you did have a river. Yes, I have the river inside. Alright, fourteen eighty three, Roger. Heading three three zero. Carson heading. All right, so three, from four, uh. Intercept the localizer. Just in case we don't get the snowflake here, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to brief okay, the fixes on the Corey arrival. So, uh, make sure that this is, uh, yep, y'all can see it there. So, yeah, that's better. Yes, sir. Uh, medical so I'll do this pretty quickly, but uh, Skippy is what we're coming up to next. Edger above flight level 190 zero best Edger above 17,000. Edger, Davies Edger above 13. Holly, Brand Edger above 11. Corey at 10, and then we have Robbinsville, Tykes, Minks Renew, Apple Proud, and the airport. I'm going to go ahead and punch in the ILS to runway 4. Let me turn off that chart so it's not blocking the screen for you all the whole time. Um, and vectors to 4. And we're supposed to be going to Skippy. You always want to check where, you're, where it's taking you before... Oops, not that one. Before you hit Execute. So direct Skippy. That's in the magenta now. 048 track. Yep, that matches. Execute. So there we go. That all looks good. And then on the approach, we're looking at... Let me pull this up. Uh, you got to go. Bye-bye. I promise to watch more streams. Thank you, Red Runs World. Glad to have you here. Have more. Have a great evening. Yep, check out the replay. Appreciate your support, man. Alec Henderson, you wanted to be a pilot your whole life. Just recently started lessons in a 50-year-old Cessna 172. And you know what? I think just enjoy your time at that plane, man. Those things are uh, classic. Sometimes you'll miss flying in one of the old planes like that when you're in a, a jet like the CRJ. You will. You have a lot of freedom in those 172s, so enjoy it. Flying's a wonderful journey. All right, let's brief the uh, approach ILS runway four, which is what we're gonna we're shooting for now. Which one ILS runway four? Localizer frequency is 110.5, so let me punch that into the standby and the RTU. 110. Point, whoops. Here, I'm just gonna do it this way. This is faster. 110.50. Oh, actually, yep, we can't do the standby there. So, ah! There we go. So, I'll try to do it again down here. 110.5 standing by in the RTU. The, uh. Oh, there's our snowflake, so let's start down. I think it's going to be about uh, 1,500 feet per minute, 1,600, 1,700 feet per minute. We'll this. I'll try to maintain 290 knots. All right. Um, Probably not, but you have a shutter. And center Lundberg 6337 vacating flight level 210. Lundberg uh, 6337, we probably don't have. Uh, actually, yeah, you do have a key. Okay, never mind. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this brief really quickly. I'm just going to look at it on my side. 
110.5 standing by in the RTU. Radio tuning in at 044 course inbound, and then DA is going to be 310. So let me hold down shift so I can move these numbers back really quickly. So we get a 310 feet on the MDA, which it, there we go, 310. We need to set our altimeter really quickly. 30. Double check on that altimeter setting really quickly. Three zero three two. Whoa, sorry about that again. Three zero three two is cross checked. Let's get the uh, lights on really quickly. Logo and wing inspections are on, and uh, landing elevation on the approach. Uh, touchdown zone is 21 feet. We have 40 set for the pressurization at the field there. MSA is 3,000 to the west, 2,100 to the um, east of LaGuardia VOR. Published miss, climb to 2,000, outbound on the LaGuardia, 043 radial to Greco intersection and hold, and continue climb and hold to 2,000. The autopilot coupled approach is not authorized for this approach, and uh, Pappy's on the right side, miles are lighting. And let me, uh, I'll go ahead and brief our, and that's the rest of the approach, what I was just briefing there. And so if we do the expressway visual you'll see we'll be tracking that localizer inbound to dials which is 4.9 miles from the localizer end and we'll see the white tanks and then we follow the Long Island expressway around city field and end and after we land if we land on four right turn probably Quebec three one right turn at Tango and then it's usually probably gonna be Hotel Alpha back to gate 48 which is right there Currently offline, looks like they just popped off there. You might arrive, you want to keep you playing, copy this. 228, Lemberg 6337, good day. Alright, so it'll be uncontrolled, it sounds like. So we will definitely be doing the expressway visual to 3 1, because we can call our own shots now. <laughs> so that'll be fun. We'll make it. I'm going to put 1228 in 2, and we'll. Point. And we'll be, I'm going to change COM1. Alright, so we crossed Davies at or above, oops, sorry, 13,000. Going toward Brand. Now, this is a trap. We got to make sure that we cross Brand at or above 11,000. So, Alec Henderson, yeah, you love the 172. Good. Yeah, I'm glad you love it. It's a great plane. Uh, CRJs are fun, and also 172s. Absolutely. And for those of you watching over on Twitch, I apologize. I uh, let me see. I do not it is not showing any of the Twitch chat on my uh, screen here, so I'm going to check it out really quickly. Make sure I'm not missing anything. So welcome aboard, everyone over on Twitch. I do appreciate you all watching. I usually stream on YouTube. I just I happen to go up on Twitch also tonight. All right, we're going to reduce our vertical speed here because we're going to bust this restriction at. Washington Center, Airport. I think we're going to make it. Okay, good. We'll go Corey at 10. So there's that magenta banana bar. And we're going to be right at 11,000 as we cross brand, which is perfect. So that VNAV snowflake worked perfectly. And the real plane, a lot of times, it'll actually give you the vertical speed to descend at, too, which is which is nice. I'm going to keep our speed up for a little bit at 290, and then we'll descend down as we get closer to the airport. Direct, uh, 
large area of frequency was to you and swap reading to some parts of the section. Uh, Alex Cap. And I don't think we ran through the this, the arrival check yet. Let's do that. Altimeter is 3032 cross check. Landing data, we did not set that yet. So, once again, that's why checklists are important. Cross check at or above 2100 cleared our nav runway 14 for three. All right, so for our performance, uh, V2 is going to be 135. Let's set the VT, we have that up already now, so I'll go ahead and set that. It's going to be 178. The uh, V1, I'm going to set that to the same as VREF at 127. Thank you. You can make it disappear in the real plane. I don't think it lets you in here, and V2 is going to be 135. So that's set. So we have a VT at 178. V1, 135. I'm sorry, V1 is uh, 127, VR 127. We'll have 132 in the bucket, and then V2 set at 135, so perfect. All right, I'm going to turn this off so that it doesn't do anything funny to us. And so land as set, pressurizations check, passenger signs on, external lights set, arrival brief complete, arrival check complete. And we'll start our descent. It's close to 250. And then we'll go down to 7,000 feet. Let's see, Alec Henderson, did you put on the lights? I may have missed it. Also, you may put them on before reading this. Uh, let's check. I'll put 7,000 in first and start a descent. And then I'm going to check the lights after I get us descending properly. We'll go to 1,000 feet per minute. Get a little more thrust in here. And let's go up and look at those lights. Yes, we do have the landing lights on, Recog taxis. Thank you for asking, Alec. That's always very important. Seatbelt sign important needs to come on, though. So. Yeah, it's important. Thank you for speaking up. That's important to aviation safety. Anything? If you have a question, speak up. Even if you're a brand new pilot, your captains will thank you. <laughs> and Ren Ren's world, okie dokie, I don't have to go. That is great news, Ren Ren. I'm glad you're back. Glad you're back. I've got to speed this plane up a little bit. We. I will say one thing I've noticed so far, and it might just be my sensitivity settings for the thrust levers, but um, the engines are very delayed. Washington with when I set Delta the thrust and when the engines respond, so I feel like it's Delta not quite as delayed in real life. It is a little delayed, but three, six, six, five. I think they'll probably fine tune that. Because uh, I feel like you don't have to jockey the thrust levers quite as much. However, one of the secrets is fuel flow when setting thrust for certain Three, speeds six, six, so five, when I figure them out for here in the aerosol CRJ I'll try to share them but that's one of the secrets Alec Henderson you have noticed the engine latency as well yep yeah it's real all right, 8,000 for Let's see how far out we are from LaGuardia now. We're getting pretty close because see Long Island out there. Manhattan's going to be right there. And uh, by the way, just call me Clarence. Absolutely, Clarence. Nice to meet you. And uh, glad. I'm glad that you are back. And you're back just in time for the most exciting part, honestly. This expressway visual is one of my favorites. Let's see if I can do it in the simulator. <laughs> What's crazy is you'll have big old Boeing 757s doing this in real life on these crazy windy days in New York City. And that's just, that's a cool sight to see. 
Those big old metal birds flying in. Barely over City Field. In a hard left bank. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. I accidentally left the FMS here on... Uh, yeah, there we go. Renew. We need to keep it right there. All right, we're going to go ahead and send down to 4,000 feet. Just having to kind of make it up as I go here, based on what I can kind of remember from this. Oh, come on. There it goes. American 400, Atlanta Center is that line. We'll do a thousand feet per minute. Let's see. Alec, the 757 is one of my favorites. I can't wait for the MS FS Freeware 757 to be. Whoa, I have not heard about that yet. So they're going to have a, a 757 in Flight Sim that's Freeware. That is exciting. That is really exciting. So what you're saying is. We're all going to have to go up and try this Expressway Visual 3.1 in the Freeware 7.5 when it comes out. That sounds like a great plan. I'll totally try that out. I have the Flight Factor 7.5 on X-Plane. And, and I love it. It's, it's a, a cool final airplane. Altitude of flight level 380. Very cool. Thanks for telling me about that. I'll have to go check that out um, after the flight's over Thank here. You. I don't know if I gave the flight attendant the bells. Looks like we have somebody else that's flying in to the area. They might be going into Kennedy, I don't know. But definitely someone out over the ocean coming in toward New York. Alright, so there's the runway, runway 4. We have the airport in sight. Manhattan's out there. Statue of Liberty is going to be there. Verrazano Bridge right there. So very cool. We'll just try to, so here's the plan. Let me, I'm going to pull this up really quickly before we get super busy with this approach. Um, hope I'm not blocking too much. Let me take a quick peek. Okay, yeah, that's, that'll, that'll work. So for this Expressway Visual 3.1, we have the localizer frequency at 110.5. And we'll look for Prospect Park, the white twin tanks, dials 4.9 nautical miles out. And we'll follow that. We cross dials at or above 2,500. So we plan to cross dials at 2,500 and fully configured for landing. And let me get back over here and fly the airplane. Looks like we're about to level off. We have five for four. And then we'll look to be at 1,000 feet when we are turning base by the Billie Jean King Tennis Center in City Field. And we'll roll out on final right around 500 feet. So it's going to be, you'll see, we're right at the edge of being stable or not. But it is fun. All right, I'm going to maintain our present heading, which looks like we're good. So we're coming up on Prospect Park pretty soon. I'm going to send us down to 2,500. I need to go over to 122.8. Ah, oops. Uh oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm going to start slowing us down. I can't tell if this guy's going LaGuardia or Kennedy over here to our right. Looks like he's going to LaGuardia. I'm going to start slowing us back to 180 knots. Let's switch on over to 122.8 on COM1 now. And then I'm going to switch this back to 21.5 on COM2. Alright, that'll work. LaGuardia traffic, Limburg 63.37, 10 miles to the south inbound for the Expressway Visual 3.1. LaGuardia. Alright, we can go flaps 1.
And flaps eight. Switch to heading mode. So sync heading, heading. We're gonna go ahead and tune in the localizer. We're only four. 110.5. Switch over to green needles here. And see now we now we have our distance. Outs cap. So here are the white should be no factor for the incoming uh, dread on three There's the white tanks and the Long Island Expressway that we'll be following out for the expressway visual as briefed. So we want to be configured by the time we get to the two white tanks as they call them. So flaps 20. And let's go gear down. Flaps 30. Arm the thrust reversers. Bug ref plus factor. B ref plus factor, which is going to be plus five. I got to add some extra thrust in here. Ooh. I don't want to speed up too much, but you just want to be fully configured before you start this. All right, there we go. Ref plus factor. And we're going to keep it at the top of the speed bucket. So autopilot's off. I'll push back up the autopilot disconnect bar. Here we go. So with the white tanks, we're pretty much at dials here. I'll maintain our altitude for just a little bit longer. We'll go ahead and start turning. And we follow the Long Island Expressway off the nose all the way around and back to runway four. All right, Clarence, I'll try to butter it on. <laughs> it's a little, I'll say it's a little bit more difficult than you'd think. But I'll try. Here we go. And we need to do our landing check. So gear is down. Down. Flaps 45. We are not at flaps 45. So that's why we do a checklist. Flaps 45. And thrust reversers are armed. And we can see them there enunciated in the advisory message. And we're five knots slow. So increasing thrust. Landing check is complete. I'll go ahead and clear the status messages, box them up. Like I said, we're looking for a target of a thousand feet when we're turning that base leg right around city field. Got to keep the aircraft coming down. We're a little bit high. Recorded traffic. Limburg 6337 left downwind runway 31 via the expressway visual. LaGuardia. But uh, this is a fun, fun approach. Make Swiss 001 proud. <laughs> oh man, I'm going to do my best here. This is a fun one. I can't wait until someone makes some cool LaGuardia scenery. Like this looks great already, but um, it's I know it's just going to keep getting better and better. Here come the stutters, guys. So I do apologize for that. Instruments cross-checked. Gear checked down. We are clear to land. There's City Field. So we just keep wrapping around on the road over Flushing Meadows Park. Alright. We gotta keep it coming down here. As you really, you'll see we're probably still going to be high when we turn final. We keep it at the top of the speed bucket. That's the maneuvering speed. It's so one cool thing about the speed bucket and the CRJ. It's 10 knots that it travels. So if you're at the top of it, you're 10 knots above the um, the speed, the VREF speed. And that's the maneuvering speed. Ah, wow, I am really stuttering here. We're still a little bit high. We need to be at 500 feet as we come over this uh, berm here. Five. And I need to reduce our vertical speed. And I'm really getting bad frame rates, guys. 400. Rate. Reducing vertical speed. 500. Five knots Safe slow. Rate. 
I'm getting really bad frame rates. Sync rate. 200. There's our Vazzy. Sync rate. This is going to be a hard landing. <laughs> Cause it might freeze on me right when I'm about to touch down. Let's see. Come on. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. There we go. We made it. Hey, get back on the center line though. There's 90 knots. And we'll take the next right up here. This will work. Plays butter. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the terminal looks. Or I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, we're at nighttime here, so you know you can kind of hide a lot of the problems, but uh, we made it. I need to keep the thrust up so we can get off the runway. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, Clarence. Very kind of you. Don't worry about the bot there. You're not offending me. <laughs> Alright, so we're exiting at... Oh, gosh. Sorry, I accidentally hit the brakes a little too hard there. When you get off the runway, those controllers would be yelling at us. Off at Sierra, so we'll take Sierra, Bravo, Golf, Golf, and Alpha. LaGuardia traffic, Lindbergh 6337, clear 31. At Sierra, taking Sierra, Bravo, Golf, Golf, and Alpha to the gate. LaGuardia. All right, flaps up. And after takeoff check, or psh, after landing, <laughs> after takeoff. We're doing the opposite of that right now. All right, we're going to gate 48. Thank you, thank you, Clarence. Appreciate the kind words. And we turn our windshield and probe heats off. It's all associated. Start up the APU so we don't accidentally power down the whole airplane once we get in. Check that our radars are off, which they are. I didn't use them on this flight. It's like a perfectly clear the whole way. Swiss 001 is proud. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Alright, we'll be taking this in. I think our gate 48 is... Yeah, this looks... It does look really weird with this default LaGuardia Cedary. You know, I can't imagine it's going to be too long before someone's made the scenery for this, though, guys. I really think it'll be here before we know it. I'm going to switch the nav source back to the white needles, too. That's something typically you do. All right, so second right, we'll be heading into gate number 48. Alec Henderson, well, thanks for the flight, Captain. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you so much, Alec. You know, you guys really made this flight um, an enjoyable one. It helps having a crew along with me. It's fun to talk to you guys and share our love of aviation and flight simulation together. So thank you for joining. All right, here we go. We'll turn into the ramp here. Have a tug and a, what is that, like a fire vehicle? And looks like somebody took our gate. That's all right. We'll park at 40, what is this, 47. That'll work. We're going to 47 now. My stuttering on this sim is getting really bad now. All right, I'm not even going to shift to the external view just so I don't overload the computer. I'm just going to assume this is a great place to stop. Let's set the parking brake. There we go. Turn off the recog taxi and landing lights. Get the dome light on so we can see in the cockpit, right? There we go. There's a freeware LGA for Flight Sim on FlightSim.to. Thank you, Ninkapoop. I'm going to check that out. Definitely. I will check that out right away. 